And now the starting lineup for your Finley Prep Pilots. At forward, six foot eight, number 15, Winston Shepherd. And at forward, six foot nine, number 22, Brandon Ashley. At guard, six foot four, number zero, Nigel Williams Gus. At guard, six foot one, number five, Dominic Ardens. At guard, six foot six, number two, Amadeo Denabe. We call it the head and shoulder rule. If your head is below his shoulders, you got him beat. If his head is below your shoulders, he's got you beat. Okay? That's the key. So you got to stay down and stay low. Okay. I can come up and be here, but my knees are down. I'm keeping my weight down, center of gravity low. I'm contesting here with my hands, but I'm not locking my knees because that's what he wants. I get locked up. Now he gets under me, goes by me. It's my foul. Yes. Go. Good. Good. Trace it. Keep working. Good. Because basketball is a very, very difficult sport to play. Good. Very, very difficult sport. Tex Winter has a line is that, uh, and you can say this about all sports, basketball is an easy game to play, but a hard game to master. Bother the ball, get him pivot away. Keep your feet moving, balls your feet, keep moving. Good, chop, chop, chop. What would you tell Nigel? Freshman year, Like, I would go back and tell him, like, just keep working, stay patient, your time will come. Freshman year, always working constantly. Like when we was on road trips, and I mean, and I knew I wasn't gonna play a lot. Like you know, I would go to the weight room. You know, everyone else was in the room getting ready for the game, knowing I'm not gonna play in the game. So you know, get an extra lifting, get in the cardio. You know, do ball handling in the hotel. Just anything I could, just to stay sharp. You know, what I mean, just in case my time, you know, or my number was called, I was ready. And, and then I mean, just the whole patience thing. Just that you know, this thing is a process. Like my dad said, like he told me before coming into my freshman year, kind of like high school was kind of like a basketball game, like four quarters. You know, if you get a large deficit in the first quarter, you know, it don't mean that much because you got a lot of time to come back. And so that's what I kind of looked at my freshman year, you know, not really playing a lot. It was just that, you know, it's still early in the game. And, you know, I got a lot of time to come back. And, and I feel like I, I've just been building since then. <laughs> I played soccer when I was really young, then I played uh, soccer and basketball. Then when I was eight, I, st I stopped playing soccer and I started playing basketball. I used to play guard uh, because they, they, re uh, they, needed more, they needed more points for me and instead I played play the points. But I feel, in, I feel inside me I'm a point guard. You know, our guard plays, you know, again, like I said, it may not be to, to, to fans or people on the outside as flashy as it has been, but it is certainly very productive and efficient to this point in the season. He made it look great at me, and he started talking to me about the program and how we play, how we want to play, and what we're trying to reach this year. And I mean, my, my personal goal, and I mean, everybody's goal is to reach this national championship.
go through their chin. Hey, that's part of the deal. Don't worry about bloody in a lip or nose. Somebody's got to come out with it. Just go go through guys' chins. You know what? Next time, you won't have to think about going around or going through them. They'll just back out of the way, and you can just go right to the rim and do what the hell you want. If I'm off the ball, I've got the hardest job. If I'm guarding the ball, this, this is the easiest job. You know, I was thinking about this driving in. If this was your last game that you played, this is the last game of your life that you played, how would you want it to look? We've been through a lot of shit together in terms of a pre preparation and conditioning, all the weights, all the shots, all the practice, all the hard work, all that 6 a.m. This is what we did it for. Tonight's the first night. Ready? Let's go. This will be the first, first step to our undefeated season, y'all. We all know who we've been working for. So let's just go out here and start it off, start it off right, y'all. In your name, amen. 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 Let's go, y'all. Come on, y'all. You ready? Yeah, at first, I thought it was going to be me and Nigel. And then once the season started, I guess it just wasn't meshing that way. So then I had to come off. Amadeo Danabelli! Tipped off, and I was started off on the, on the bench. So and then he called my name. It was like my heart started racing real fast. I don't think I've ever ran to the scorers table that fast. Go, go, go ahead and finish. Don't settle for the shot. We've got high low action. because I was actually at the Duran Williams camp with DA and at that time he had said you know I kind of thought about coming but you know it doesn't look like I probably will and so like I told my dad I was like you know watch him play and I was like man we, we, we played together you know at some camp stuff like that and I was like man he would be a great addition to the team but no I wasn't really worried about the whole you know his spot my spot you know, I, I knew we're both point guards, but like I said, we had played together, and I thought the way we played together, it, it just kind of worked, just like it, you know, kind of works now. When I came, I, I had to, I knew that I, I kind of knew I was going to start, and then when I got here, it was just, I mean, I thought I was doing good. You cover, but you got to switch under. You can't go over the top and then switch and say, oh, okay. I mean, 
mean, yeah, we had talks about it, but I mean, at the end, he felt like he was best, and I mean, and then it just kind of played out that way. Last year was the first year in our program that we haven't, we did not have a third-year player on the roster. You know, previous years we had three-year players: Godwin the year before, Carlos the year before that. You know, this year we've got two of them. And if you want to talk about production and efficiency, those two players are Winston and Nigel. So, you know, it's like I, I had this conversation with Dominic. I'm not saying he's better than you. I'm not saying he can do this better and he's this or that or you're not as good or that. That's not what I'm saying at all. The advantage he has is he has two years under in our system. <laughs> I have not overhauled and changed my philosophy. We've tweaked some things, but Nigel knows exactly what we do, how we do it, and why we do it, and what's expected of him day in and day out. We can tell you all that stuff, Dom, and you're going to be great going through it, and you're going to get better, but you just don't, you haven't had the luxury like he has for the last, you know, two years walking into this gym every day knowing exactly what things are going to go like and what things I'm going to emphasize and what things are important to me from a coaching standpoint that's going to translate to our, to our team. Well, the psychological dimension of coaching and addressing athletes, I feel, is the most important. And I think it's sometimes at the youth levels and maybe even somewhat at the high school levels a neglected component. Um, but by the time a kid gets in uh, high school, most coaches understand the psychological dimension that you have to a address that. And many coaches will tell you that they don't treat and you shouldn't a players the same uh, because everybody's a unique human being and you have to understand that component, but you have to treat all players fairly. And one of the great equalizers in basketball that Coach Peck has the ability to utilize because of the talent around him and some coaches don't. He has the ability to use the bench, which is the coach's best friend. I thought the bench was good, supporting guys. It's the first time in a long time that consistently the bench, I, I noticed bench guys are up when guys are coming out. And there's no pissing and moaning on the bench. Guys are just, you know what, they're into the game. One guy I tell you we can learn from, Dom goes in the game and I tell you what, just this is just being a player. This isn't anything. I'm not taking credit for this. Our staff is not taking credit for this because it's not like we drilled them and brought them in after practice. Hey, you gotta do this. This is just being a player. He goes in there, everything's off two feet. Boom. And you know what? 205 that he can put up on the bench five or six times, he's just gonna mow through a guy's chest. And I'm just going through your chest and I'm getting an one, or I'm just gonna. I'm going to knock you back, and I'm going to finish over and through you. So you know what? He finishes plays in there. Could Dominic Artis be a starter? Absolutely tomorrow. Would I lose sleep over it? Absolutely not. It's just right now, you know, I, I'm not so sure that Nigel's done anything to say we need to turn the keys over to someone else. I mean, he's pretty efficient. We've been in a good rhythm in terms of playing, so I don't see it real necessary at that position to make any changes. Let's go, y'all. Pete on three. One, two, three. Pete. Huh? Yeah, I got on sneaks, but I need a new the blue teams out there. The Black History Month, Kobe. If you're a sneakerhead, you don't have these. It's a problem. Yeah, I got on sneaks, but I need a new The swishes in the back, Velcro top. I don't want to have the same thing everybody else got on. It's like each shoe represents a memory. When I do that switch, I'll be coming out so live in the second half, man. That's the only reason I'll be doing it. I mean, a sneakerhead is somebody who, I mean, plain and simple, let's break down the words. Sneaker, head. So all that's in my head is sneakers. Uh, Finley shirt, man. This is the most amazing shirt out there. This is the best shirt in the world, and you have to wear it for all because it regards Finley basketball. You get your hands on this, man. This 
you one of a kind. So. It's, it's kind of like a guarantee, like 45 points. 25 rebounds. 26 assists. That's what happens when you wear the Finlay t-shirt. Shots out of man. You want to get one of these shirts right here? First, you got to follow the Finley season. And you got to retweet the episode. So go ahead and do those two things, and hopefully, you, you know what I mean? Get one of these shirts. Now take my picture. Yeah. Yeah.